Hi, this is Frank Vacci. I'm at the ASAM 2015 MedSci meeting, and I'm here with Dr. Kathleen Decker, who is, has a poster on medication adherence and mortality in veterans with comorbid substance abuse and psychosis. So first question, Dr. Decker, what, uh, what was your impetus for actually studying the psychosis in these veterans? Well, we started with a hypothesis that following veterans who had an index psychiatric hospitalization, we might find differences in medication adherence by different type of primary psychiatric diagnosis. That was not actually what we found. It turned out that the story within a story was the substance use disorder component of their diagnoses or their comorbid substance use disorder diagnoses. I see. So these guys were veterans. Uh, what, from what era were they from? There were three eras, as you see over here. The, um, there were 42 from the Persian Gulf era, there were 28 from post-Vietnam era, and 62 from the Vietnam era. So three different service eras. I see, were there any differences in terms of the rate of psychosis or any of your findings, or did you aggregate the findings? We aggregated the findings in terms of psychosis. We did not aggregate the findings. We separated them by diagnosis and by comorbid substance disorder diagnosis. Um, we disaggregated them with respect to mortality. So we do have mortality by service era. I see. Okay, now we're... I should add one thing about the service era. We did look at medication adherence by different service era, and we did not find significant differences by service era. I see. So were, were these guys adherent to their antipsychotic medications? Well, um, so 70% was the overall medication adherence rate in these veterans and then it depended on their diagnosis and their comorbid diagnosis. So 70% is not what we call ideal. In most publications 80% is considered a reasonable medication adherence. So they were less than usually adherent, but 70% is not really a bad number. Lower than 70% begins to be problematic as you can imagine especially with an antipsychotic so were any of these individuals on the new generation antipsychotics, and if so, did that make a difference in their adherence? Yes, they were. We had a wide variety of antipsychotic medications they were on, and that was looked at, and the different types of antipsychotic medications did not make a difference in medication adherence. Okay. How about injectable antipsychotics? Did you do any of the depot antipsychotics? We had so few people who were on depot, probably five out of the 137, that it wasn't statistically significant. I see. Okay. So what's the take home from the study so far? Okay, so there are a couple of points that are of particular interest, especially because of the interest in cannabis at the current time. The first take home is that those with comorbid alcohol and cannabis use disorders had lower medication adherence um, than those with psychiatric diagnosis and no comorbid disorder. A second one was that those with major depression and psychosis had a lower medication adherence rate, only 40 percent, compared to those with bipolar disorder disorder where it was 70 percent which is the same overall. A second or a third finding was that as you might expect unfortunately homeless veterans had a lower medication adherence rate than those who were not homeless. Only 50 percent versus uh, 70 percent. And then the most interesting thing that we didn't plan on finding had to do with mortality. And that was that veterans from the post-Vietnam era and the Vietnam era died at an astonishing 17.5% rate. And that's calculated as an incremental death rate. So you start with the mean age at the beginning of the study, mm -hmm. and you follow, we followed them for six years, mm -hmm. and we looked at the U.S. population to see what percentage of males die within that six-year period. So you can see that for the post-Vietnam vets, 18% died versus 2%, and for the Vietnam vets, 17% died versus 4%. So then we looked at, and because of the VA's National Electronic Health Care Record, we were able to pin down the cause of death in almost all of the people who died. Of them, of this 18 and 17%, only 4% died of natural causes other than substance use. 14% died of substance-related deaths, and ten, five, half of them died of alcohol-related substance use, and the other half of them died of nicotine-related substance use death. Okay, so we have our, our legal intoxicants that are knocking people off in this, in this age group. Huh? 
Well, I think um, I'd put it in a more formal way, and I'll remind you that my views represent uh, those of the investigator and not the federal government nor the VA. But the conclusion I would reach, it, which is that it's crucial for us to continue to put tremendous amount of time, energy, and money into treating nicotine as well as alcohol use disorders in people because they literally are killing our veterans at a very high rate. All right, so is your next study going to be trying to do more focused research and treatment on this population? Well, I've already done a large outcome study for five years on patients in residential substance use treatment, so my real desire is to look at both people with post-traumatic stress disorder and substance use disorder and how we can improve those treatments. I've already developed a novel substance use treatment program called Natural Recovery, where we try and improve the reward system in veterans recovering from substance use disorder. So my next step is a randomized controlled trial of seeing whether hobbies, things like art, music, sports, can enhance the recovery process. We did a very large pilot study that showed that, in fact, people completed the residential substance use treatment at a higher rate and that they um, died at a lower rate. So we actually have some preliminary evidence that suggests the program I developed was helpful, but now we need to get the real science done and do a randomized controlled trial. Okay, so are you asking for the VA for money for this or NIH? Yes. yes okay. <laughs> I'll just say yes, that'd be a great idea, either or both. <laughs> okay, all right, very good. Thank you. This is fascinating. Okay. Appreciate it.